my dear students a very warm welcome to all of you in this session of anatomy where we will discuss about the heart the heart is a hollow conical muscular organ that is situated in the mediastinum let me draw the outline of the heart first this is the outline of the heart you can see and this heart is presented behind the thoracic wall in the mediastinum now what is mediastinum mediastinum is the space between the two lungs here is the right lung here is the left lung left and right in between the right and left lung there is a space which is filled with soft tissue and viscera this space in between the two lungs is known as the mediastinum so heart is present in the mediastinum media stinum okay the heart is placed obliquely behind the sternum and adjoining part of the costal cartilages the sternum is a midline bone situated in the anterior median plane of the breast this is the sternum sternum and this sternum articulates with the costal cartilages which are hyaline cartilages present on the anterior end of the ribs so in the blue we are marking the costal cartilages that are articulating with the sternum on both the sides costal cartilage now heart is present obliquely behind the sternum and adjoining costal cartilages it is present in such a way so that one third of the heart is to the right of the median plane and two third of the heart is to the left of the median plane so what does that mean if we clear the diagram and draw just the outline of the heart like this this is the outline of the heart and then if we draw the median plane along the midline of the body then you will see that one third of the heart fall to the right of the median plane this is one third and the majority that is the two third of the heart that is situated onto the right side of the median plane the heart is enclosed in a fibrocerous sac which is known as the pericardium pericardium the pericardium comprises three layers from outside inwards the most outside layer it is known as the fibrous pericardium fibrous pericardium inside the fibrous pericardium there lie the serous pericardium consisting of two layers the outer layer of the serous pericardium lines inside the fibrous pericardium it is also known as the parietal layer of serous pericardium parietal layer of serous pericardium and the layer which lies most within that is known as the visceral layer of serous pericardium that directly lines the heart this is the visceral layer of serous pericardium that means if i have to take a look at the heart then we have to cut through the pericardium in the diagram you can see that the heart in situ is covered with the fibrocerous sac that is the pericardium so uh, from outside we can see the fibrous pericardium which is the most outer layer now we are incising through the fibrous pericardium and when we incise through the fibrous pericardium obviously the 
parietal layer of serous pericardium it comes along with it and what is left is the visceral layer of serous pericardium adherent to the heart now we have removed the heart along with the visceral layer of serous pericardium from the rest of the pericardial cavity and here is the heart covered with the visceral layer of serous pericardium for further inspection the shape of the heart is pyramidal or conical with the following measurements the length is 12 cm width is 9 cm and weight is 300 gram in males and 250 gram in females the heart is slightly larger than one's own clenched fist the apex of the heart is a conical area that is formed by the left ventricle only it is directed downwards and forwards and to the left it lies at the level of left fifth intercostal space 9 cm away from the midline and just medial to the mid clavicular line the thrust of the apex is known as the apex bit which represents the point of maximum cardiac impulse in the infants the heart is positioned more horizontally so that the apex of the heart lies in third or fourth left intercostal space and consequently the apex bit in children up to the age of seven years of age is felt in the third or fourth intercostal space just lateral to the mid clavicular line normally the apex of the heart is on the left side an apex width hence is felt on the left side that is the left fit intercostal space but sometimes what happens the heart is mal positioned with apex on the right side this condition is called dextrocardia it may be associated with complete liver cell of other thoracic and abdominal viscera which is a condition known as situs inversus base of the heart the base or posterior surface of the heart is formed by two atria mainly by the left atrium strictly speaking two third of the base is formed by the posterior surface of the left atrium and one third by the posterior surface of the right atrium it is directed backwards and towards the right i mean it is present opposite to the apex the characteristic features of the base are as follows number one it lies opposite to the apex number two it lies in front of the middle fourth thoracic vertebrae at the level of t5 to t8 in the lying down position and it descends one vertebra below in the erect posture so in standing up posture the position of the base is opposite the t6 to t9 vertebrae the base is separated from the vertebral column by the oblique pericardial sinus esophagus and aorta the following structures can be seen in relation to the base the left and right pair of pulmonary veins in the left there are two pulmonary veins in the right there are two pulmonary veins and both of them are opening into the left atrium on to the right side we get to see the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava opening into the right atrium we can also make out the right and left pulmonary arteries and the arch of aorta along with its branches the heart present three surfaces first the sternocostal surface or the anterior surface it is formed mainly by the right atrium and right ventricle right atrium and right ventricle are separated from each other by the anterior part of the atrioventricular groove the sternocostal surface is also partly formed by the left auricle and the left ventricle the right ventricle is separated from the left ventricle by the anterior interventricular groove the left atrium is hidden on the front by the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk the diaphragmatic surface is flat 
and it rests on the central tendon of the diaphragm. So the arrow marked surface will be the diaphragmatic surface of the heart which rests on the central tendon of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the partition between the thoracic and the abdominal cavities. This is the outline of the diaphragm. Now if we turn over the heart we can see the outline of the diaphragmatic surface like this. This is the outline of the diaphragmatic surface when you turn over the heart. This diaphragmatic surface is formed by the left and the right ventricles. This is the left ventricle, this is the part of the right ventricle. And these two ventricles are separated from each other by the posterior part of the interventricular groove. So posterior interventricular groove, this is this one, posterior inter ventricular groove it separates the diaphragmatic portion of the left and right ventricles from each other the left surface is formed mainly by the left ventricle and partly by the left atrium and the auricle it is directed upward backwards and towards the left borders of the heart first the right border it is more or less vertical and is formed by the right atrium it extends from the right side of the opening of the SVC to that of the IVC and separates the base from the sternocostal surface the left border is curved and oblique it is formed mainly by the left ventricle and partly by the left auricle it extends from the left auricle to the apex of the heart and separates the sternocostal surface from the left surface. The inferior border is nearly horizontal and extends from the opening of the inferior vena cava to the apex of the heart. It is formed by the right ventricle. The right atrium also forms a part of this border. The inferior border separates the sternocostal surface from the diaphragmatic surface. Near the apex it presents a notch which is known as incisura epicis cordis. The upper border is slightly oblique and is formed by the right and left atria mainly by the latter. The upper border is obscured from the view on the sternocostal surface because of ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk lie in front of it. Chambers of the heart. The heart consists of four chambers, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricles. The two atrial chambers are separated from each other by a vertical septum which is known as interatrial septum and the two ventricular chambers are separated from each other by another vertical septum the interventricular septum. Demarcation of the chambers of the heart on the surface is by the following three sulci or groups. Number one is the coronary sulcus or atrioventricular groove. The coronary sulcus or atrioventricular groove encircles the heart and it separates the atria from the ventricles. Anteriorly it is deficient due to the root of the pulmonary trunk. The atrioventricular groove is divided into anterior part and posterior part. The anterior part is seen from the frontal view of the heart and posterior part is seen from the posterior view. The anterior part again consists of right and left halves. The right half runs downwards and to the right between the right atrium and right ventricle and it lodges the right coronary artery. Whereas the left half of the anterior AV groove intervenes between the left auricle and left ventricle and it lodges the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. The posterior part of the AV groove intervenes between the base and the diaphragmatic surface of the heart and it lodges the coronary sinus. Anterior and posterior interventricular sulci. They separate the right and left ventricles. The anterior interventricular sulcus, it separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle and is seen from the sternocostal surface of the heart. And it lodges the anterior interventricular artery and great cardiac vein. Whereas the posterior interventricular groove 
lie on the diaphragmatic surface and lodges the posterior interventricular artery and middle cardiac vein. The meeting point of interatrial groove, posterior interventricular groove and posterior part of atrioventricular groove is termed as crux of the heart. When you have to hold the heart in the anatomical position, first determine the apex of the heart followed by the inferior border which runs from the apex of the heart to the opening of the inferior vena cava. So apex and the inferior border are the first two parameters that you have to determine. Thereafter you understand that you have to put the diaphragmatic surface on your hand and that's why you first determine the diaphragmatic surface. This is the diaphragmatic surface or the inferior surface that is supposed to be on the central tendon. Your hand works as the central tendon of diaphragm and you put the heart on your hand like this keeping the apex directed downward forward and medially thanks